we continue our road trip in Hongte Prefecture in southern Yunnan. This is the private garden of the Chu family in Tianshui, where we stayed for the night. Built in 1905, at the end of the Guangxi reign of the Qing Dynasty, this residential courtyard is the crown jewel of this town. Another attraction we visited was the quaint old Chaoyang Lou in Tianshui Old Town. Tianshui was a military outpost some 700 years ago in the Yuan Dynasty. It's also home to the second largest Confucius temple in China. So we're going to be heading towards an eastern direction to Swallow's Cave. And after that, it's going to be onwards and forwards to Shiping. Goodbye, beautiful accommodation. I had the chance to meet a Chinese guy in Kunming. Uh, that showed me the way, so we went together here, uh, so it was pretty easy for me. Okay. But if I didn't have this guy, it would have been really, really difficult. <laughs> so did you, um, how, how did you try and plan for the trip then? Did you uh, follow his like um, directions or did you have some ideas on where to go? Yeah, I had an idea because um, I've read the Routard Guide, which is a French guy. And they say that uh, Jiangshui was one of the most traditional cities to visit, so I wanted to go there. And uh, I had planned to go alone, so I really had the chance to meet these kind of Chinese guys, because otherwise it would have been really, really difficult for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. He seemed more shy of the camera than of the death-defying stunts. That was my boggling. I was just having a chat and he told me that his father, who also climbed, dropped twice from 60 meters and he's still not afraid. So that is incredible stuff. A, he's got no harness. B, he's got no special climbing shoes. And at the highest point, he was about 12 stories high. I mean, can you imagine? Every time he gets up there, it's like he's risking his life. And that's normal to him. It's so ironic. It's completely normal. It was a short 28 kilometer drive to the Swallows Cave. An entrance ticket costs 80 kwai. For 433 kwai, you can get access to three sites the private garden of the Jew family, Confucius Temple, and the Swallows Cave. The grotto has two main sections a dry and water cave. The river flows seven kilometers into one. Expert climbers scale the rocks and hang inscribed tablets on the roof for prosperity, safety, and luck. During the spring and summer seasons, hundreds of thousands of swallows flock here. Although we miss this window, this gigantic cast formation is a marvel in itself. They seem to have thought of everything here. They've got trinkets, knickknacks, and souvenirs. Oh, naturally, birds nest that's harvested from here. The best thing to do is to sample the local delights here for the final verdict. So you can see this bird's nest porridge. I'm struggling to find it. Well, it costs 10 kwai, so it's not a lot of it in there, but it's thick and gooey and it looks nourishing because the cave is about a few degrees colder inside than it is outside. And then after you're done with this porridge, what you can do is there's a rock wall behind, right, and you can try and climb up. But there's a harness, of course. Um, I think I'll just stick with eating my porridge for now. They have gone all high-tech here with automatic sensors dramatically lighting up the caves. But something about this dark and foreboding environment made me want to exercise my vocal cords. I've always wanted to do this in a cave. All right, you ready? Here it goes. Hello! Is there anyone home? No! Oh, 
the body. All right, then. There's no one home. It's a magnificent cave. From the Swallows Cave, we headed west to Tuanshan Village, which lies between Tianshui and Shiping. Now there's something free you can't miss on this route. This is Shuanglong Qiao, and uh, it's a really famous bridge. We decided to stop up here on route to Tuanshan Village. It's got 17 spans, and it's built through different eras. So it's worth a look in a picture too. Is that a guy on a styrofoam? <laughs> Wanshan village lies 13 kilometers west of Tianshui. The population of the village is just 920 in 240 households with Zhang as the main clan. This is spectacular. Just quiet. And a moment to take this all in. We've decided to track up to get a good perspective on Tuan Shan village. And you can get the tour guide for about 20 RMB. It's well worth it. You know, this village has been there for more than 600 years and it's really been well preserved. I'm really hoping the sun just stays up there for a while. Come on, we need to infiltrate the village a little bit more. Ooh, careful now. Rocks are a bit tricky. A merchant named Zhang Fu came from Tianxi to Tuanshan and settled in 1382 for business. He fell in love with the land and a local lady and brought the Han Chinese culture over. Marvel at well-preserved temples, ancestral falls and residential courtyards at only 20 RMB. This is a rare example of a traditional Yunnan village compound. You know, the last thing you ever expect here is to see them selling knickknacks when you come in a place like this, but it's a lot more authentic than what you find on the streets. And there's even, check this out, that's right, a, a traveler's mahjong set. So if you're on the plane, you can really get involved in the Chinese culture. This is how much money? I'm trying to get her out. She's the direct descendant of the Zhang family, the one who started this village. So I'm trying to chat with her. I spoke with her a while, but when the cameras turned on, she laughed and then she went inside. After visiting Tuanshan Village in Tianshui, we continued our journey west to Shiping County and stayed for the night in one of these converted hotels, which was rather snazzy. Located 240 kilometers from Kunming, Shiping hosts a population of 280,000. Shiping might be developing, but they're doing it with taste. This 2,000-year-old county has restored the former glory of its old courtyards with a little modern twist. Oh, what 
and rainy day here in Shipping, but you still can manage to have some fun here. This is the old town. We just arrived late last night, and temperatures really vary here. Once it rains, it chills you to the bone, but it's still worth just taking a spin around because all the major sites are congregated around here. You never know what you might find. Oh, yeah, it's also free of charge to just go into these beautiful Chinese courtyards. From music to soybeans, Shipping's tofu is widely known and accepted as more famous than Tian Shui's. It's lunchtime now and Shipping is renowned for its very famous tofu. Now there are restaurants like these that literally conjure up hundreds of varieties of tofu and mm, for a tofu connoisseur like I am, this is the ultimate orgasmic gastronomical pleasure. Mm. This must be a tofu lover's paradise and I just think that I'm entering into this extravaganza of tofu. There's stir-fried tofu, baked tofu, barbecue tofu, steamed tofu, round tofu, mashed up tofu, circle tofu, there's velvety, smooth tofu, there's red tofu, there's chili tofu, there's parsley tofu, there's duck tofu, there's chicken tofu, there's broccoli tofu, there's egg tofu, there's pea tofu. I love shipping! Swiftly after lunch and all that tofu madness, we drove towards Zhenying Village. This 600-year-old village is located in Baoxiu Township. In 1999, it was given the title of the first village of Yunnan. This place is a great starting point to learn about old southern Chinese culture. <laughs> <laughs> a short 10 kilometers west of Shi and only 10 RMB to visit are 403 courtyards, and 28 of them are better preserved. The Han, Yi, Dai, Han, and the minorities coexist harmoniously in this village. Han Chinese culture is more pronounced here. The rain kept most indoors and happily engaged in social activities like mahjong. Though our camera was in the room, locals here hardly flinched at all. Perhaps they were used to having visitors in their backyards and all that flash voltage did not deter them from their game. Zheng village has turned out scholars who set for imperial examination and they've gained position, power and wealth. They've also built wells, bridges, ancestral halls and good homes. Some of them are free for viewing and some are not. The prominent folk houses, village gates, Ancestral halls and temples here are all living testaments of the once rich and brilliant history of Zheng Yin. Well-heeled folks of the past often blew a budget on intricate carvings. Here, you can catch a rare glimpse of the elaborate door carvings of courtyards that are under state protection. To me, the carvings spoke of a story, and if you look hard enough, you might be able to decipher the meanings. Or perhaps, I can ask my tour guide, though his Mandarin in this part of rural China is rather heavily oh, accented. Chen Long? Chai. Huh? Er Chai. Chai? Oh, Chai? Chai. Chai Jian? 
Thai? <laughs> Thai and money. Thai. I think it must be oh. money. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, it, it, it cost Tang yeah. to come in, and these carvings are exquisitely beautiful, but behind each of these, there, there's a story, a symbolism, and although he tried to explain it to me, I find it quite hard. So you're better off jumping online, Googling old Chinese carving and symbolism on it, because there's, well, a better bet that you'll be able to understand, because there are many English guides here. <laughs> Chow chi. Chow chi? Chow chi. Oh, no. Humid. Oh, humid. Humidity. This is not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. Chow chi. 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 Oh, I'm a person. 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 i giving it a quaint charm and a mellow pace of life. Night is approaching, and the town beckons our return. We can easily spend a full day touring the parameters or even visiting someone's home, if you politely ask. Easy right now. We went up and down. Oh, actually, we just went up the mountain and it was meandering. And if you don't have good intestinal fortitude like like me, then you probably don't want to eat breakfast. But FYI, the rest of the crew is fine. They're feeling fabulous. Well, at least the view the view is really breathtaking and might distract me from the inevitable. We spent the night in Shipping Town and arrived here in Mushan village. The roads leading up to the village were no good. Well, at least not for me. Mushan village is well known for the flower waste branch of the E ethnic minority. They are more remote, tucked away in the mountainous region 60 kilometers north of Shipping. <laughs> differences between all the E subgroups in their habits and clothing. Some say the altitudinal difference of the E area directly impacts their lifestyle and livelihood. The flower waste branch are natural singers as they plow and work the fields. And trust me, with moves and vocal cords like that, most of them have been doing this since they were kids. Well, let the professionals do their thing. <laughs> They're after all, you know, the, the flower waste branch of the Yi tribe. And if you think about China, it was 1.3 billion people, 94% are Han Chinese, and only 6% are ethnic minority. And we're just on the tip of the iceberg with this one branch of the Yi people. And, you know, really, I, I just feel so moved being here because it's such a remote place. And we've driven about one and a half hours from Shipping. But, you know, we've, we've come to this point where, you know, we can really see the colorful culture and I, I, I'm just so fascinated because um, it's not something you get to see very much in our modern day lives so let's let them do their thing. <laughs> There are about 8 million Yi ethnic minority people in China. 
They live primarily in the rural mountainous area of Sichuan, Yunnan, Guizhou, and Guangxi. The flower waste is only one of the subgroups found here in Honghe Prefecture. What's beautiful about this group is their enigmatic and captivating voices when sung in unison. It's like nothing I've ever heard. This branch of the E ethnic minority live high up in the mountains, near the borders with Vietnam, Laos, and Myanmar. The unique sound of their music was born in one of the world's most spectacular paddy fields. An entire afternoon whizzed by quickly, and we seem to be the only visitors here today, or perhaps in weeks. This village is a gem of a place in terms of culture, landscape, and music. <laughs> If you're really good at singing in this culture, then you have a lot of admirers. If you're really good at singing in this culture, then you have a lot of admirers. You have a song that you know because a lot of songs. That was such a fascinating experience. I mean, it's a breath of fresh air to be here, and the women just opened up, and when they sang, it was joy in their hearts. You know, they carry the torch for their tradition and for their culture. And a large part of me, I realized that modernization has hit Mushan Village already. You know, there are satellite dishes. They're using mobile phones. They're watching TV, seeing karaoke music. And I really urge you to come as soon as you can, because this is such a unique experience. That's second to none. It was an absolute privilege to observe the lives of the ethnic minorities here in Shipi. Although I sampled the famous tofu, one cannot leave this county without visiting Yilong Lake. This massive freshwater lake is known for its tranquil and peaceful surroundings, with lotus flowers dotted all over. So much of traveling is really dictated by the weather. This is our last stop in Shipping County, and it's Huan Wen Park, where you get a spectacular view of Ilo Lake. But obviously, today has been really foggy, and perhaps the next time you come, the weather will be kinder to you. Now we've got to get a move on, going down south to Hongher. So I'm really excited about the Red River. Hopefully, everything will go as planned. <laughs>